Welcome back everybody to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a 2023 Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid electric. Let's take a look. Taking a look as usual at the front. It's really nice and sporty. I mean, this is the Kia Sportage, so that checks out. Really nice fog lights, nice little grill there. I like the headlights. I like the daytime running LEDs as well. And you got your 19 inch wheels that you can see there too. Super nice. I mean, it's, it's a plastic hubcap, but I don't care. It looks really nice and Kia's gonna cheap out somewhere, right? So that's completely fine. Let's take a look at the side profile where you can see the headlights kind of bleed into the side profile of the car here. And again, really nice big wheels. Four wheel drive comes standard, so you know we like that. Nice turn signals here on the mirrors as well nice and big that you can see them one touch lock and unlock i like that too it does freeze a little bit in the snow which it is doing right now so not the greatest but it's fine at least it's there a little bit of piano black here on the trim too but i don't mind that either nice chrome on the bottom no problems there at all take a look at the back of the kia sportage really nice tail lights there they kind of look like they're from tesla a little bit i know you're probably gonna get mad at me for that one but there you go it looks like tesla i think kia copied tesla a little bit there but that's fine i like the aggressive look on the the bottom trim there nice little bit of chrome too it splits it up sportage badging bhev badging nice kia logo and that rear wiper is hidden right underneath the light bar i don't know if you can see it on camera but it's right underneath there and it works really well in the snow let's pop open the trunk of course it's automatic because kia usually is good about including those things for the price that they're asking which is very nice taking a look at the interior the the seats fold down they're not automatic or anything like that but the good news is is that there is so much room in here it is incredible how much room you get inside these things let's take a look under the hood of the kia sportage it's got kia's 1.2 liter gamma 2 turbo plug-in hybrid electric four-cylinder engine that does 177 horsepower 195 pound-feet of torque on its own now let's look at the battery like we said it is a plug-in hybrid system so the battery is an 88 kilowatt hour battery that's good for about 55 kilometers and that's about what i've been getting even in the winter even as it's snowing as you can see here that battery makes 89.7 horsepower and 224 pound-feet of torque and the engine and battery combined for a total of 261 horsepower 258 pound feet of torque which is pretty good so let's talk about the charging times a little bit as well the level one 120 volt will charge in 11 hours and 10 minutes from 15 to 100 percent level two you with a 240 volt you'll get two hours from 15 to 100 and level three is not supported on this version but you don't need it honestly i've been using the normal outlets and it's been completely fine so let's take a look at the interior all right let's start off with the rear of the kia sportage a little bit of a frozen door there all right let's have a seat here and already you can see that i don't have to struggle as much as i did in the golf obviously this is a really spacious suv this is my driver profile here this is exactly how i drive and i have so much room here for my knees and everything and you have a really nice view of that huge sunroof that's in here i really like the back seats in this kia sportage it's a very nice place to, to spend time i could do a road trip back here no problem over on the left here i have two levels of heated seating yes we do in the back that's nice 2023 they're including that stuff now a little bit of piano black it will get fingerprinty i guarantee you so that sucks a little bit maybe a mat would have been better really interesting door handles these door handles are kind of all over the car front everywhere and they're, they're interesting they give a car a little bit of the personality which we like that usb c ports in both driver and passenger seats in the back so you can charge your stuff in the back there's nothing really in the center center console here but there is some vents and stuff no ventilation control but it doesn't matter you have the heated seat so honestly i'll take it that's good job ikea for putting that in they do recline a little bit these seats here not too much but just enough that you're very comfortable you can lean back in here and just enjoy the ride right sound is okay back here too you also have this nice little fold down cup holder slash armrest thing super standard stuff there's not really a really big center stack back here so you know when you're when you want to move over or you just want more leg room this way it's perfect it's just it's just really well designed they have like these weird like i don't know if this is for like an ipad hang here or like a cell phone but you can see it better actually here i don't know what exactly this is for if you if you do know let me let me know in the comments because i don't know what this is for it could be like for like a phone holder or something because it's got rubber here i'm not i'm not sure but anyway you could actually put your ipad there and kind of have like a movie thing i don't know but anyways let's take a look at the front now all right let's now hop into the driver's seat of the kia sportage and again, same thing as the back seat. Really, really nice and clean space to spend time. We have that center gauge cluster there that we saw on the Kia Soul. It looks exactly the same. It's almost the same design, although their information here has changed because obviously it has a it has a screen where we can monitor our 
charging, whether or not we're using the battery or the gas tank, whatever, it's, it's all there. And it's nice, it does change colors too. You can change it manually or you can let it change with the drive mode, super nice. Over on the left hand side here, we have some brightness controls, track control on or off, the hold for your tailgate, it's automatic, which is, we love that. And also your gas cap popper and the park brake is here too. Moving over that, you have two memory seat functions for the driver and that's really nice too again these interesting door handles a little bit of piano black here but i'm not really putting my hand there too much other than right now in the video and there you go it's already disgusting so that is a thing as you can see here center gauge uh, console here boom piano black huge amount of piano black here it's like it's it's overload like you can literally see hello there's my camera it's a lot of piano black Again, it's a high touch area, which here doesn't really work. And you can already see it's scratched up from other people. Not me. I take care of every press car. I promise you, I do not scratch these vehicles up. But it's already scratched up a little bit and it's, it sucks. And if you have kids, again, it's probably going to get even more scratched up in that way. But moving on, you have your heated seat controls, ventilated seat controls, also heated steering wheel. Yes, the Sportage has it. Usually Hyundai and Kia are very good about including that stuff. So I never really have a problem with that huge gear selector here with like this red ring around it the parks in the center and you have your standard stuff this down here is how you change your drive modes and your terrain modes as well so that's easy easy to use easy to figure out automatic hill descent climb auto hold and this is where you choose what mode we talked about it in the driving segment what mode your ev or PHEV is on so you, whether you're hybrid all electric or whatever that's all there parking sensors and you can turn on your parking camera by pressing this button these weird um you know pop out cup holders are here again nice i guess when it's in it gives you a little bit more storage just plenty of storage here a little bit of storage here too it oh it's all it's all very organized and, and you get a lot of storage really nice leather seats up here leather seats in the back too like we said super cool it's got like five vents you can have one two, three, four, five. And if you notice, these vents kind of look like the exterior of the Sportage a little bit, a little bit of interior, exterior mixing. I, you know, I don't mind that, that's really cool. Wireless charging pad down here, but also wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. No wireless, but uh, personally, I don't really mind the difference. I can plug in a cord, I'm not lazy. So moving on to the, this is where a lot of people have problems with it. And, and I guess I can say that I also have a problem with it. It, it. Yes, it looks clean. It looks way cleaner than what Volkswagen did with their like haptic stuff. I take this over the haptic stuff, if I'm being honest, but it's still not great, right? Cause you can touch here and then you have your, your radio controls, your infotainment controls, and then you have your climate controls here. It is easier to use at a glance. I will give it that. It isn't locked into the infotainment screen. Although I can go into my massive infotainment screen here, click climate and I can control it from there. I mean, there is the duality. The only thing is if this ever glitches, you're out of luck. Like you're not controlling your climate if this decides to crap out on you at any moment. So. You know, the only dials that we have are, you know, these that kind of control the temperature, same thing for the passenger. And then again, they will control the volume when you switch it. So that that's, I mean, it's not terrible, right? And it's not a deal breaker when I'm going to buy the car either. It's just something to note. Overall, really nice interior, really nice design. I can't really call it boring. The steering wheel, again, reminds me of the sole, but physical buttons. So I like that a lot. And you know you have your cruise control buttons here and all your different things this button you can map to do something in your favorites which you can set up here in your infotainment screen which is big lots of settings you can manage your PHEV system here if it goes on for me there you go you can see how much battery i have left where the power is going it's a lot of information and then you have like this split screen thing where you can see a whole bunch of different information you can kind of scroll through it you know Overall, really, really nice. There's so many things in this infotainment. I could spend quite a bit of time, but it's the general Hyundai Kia one that you've seen other than the fact that this one has the PHEV button in it. So that's really the only difference, but let's go ahead now. That's gonna do it for the interior tour. I really do like the interior. It's, it's, it's a nice place to spend time. And when you test drive this car, you will see that too. But let's see how it drives. Let's see how this PHEV system behaves on the road. Let me strap that GoPro on and we'll be right back. All right, so here we go in the 2023 Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid electric. And boy, is it sunny out today, but it has been snowing a lot recently i think about we got probably another good dumping of probably about 15 centimeters here in quebec so the sportage has held on very well the, the all-wheel drive system has been absolutely no problem as well as the the hybrid system in the winter you'd think that it would be a little bit worse but it's not dropped so much in kilometers you, you get 55 kilometers on a full charge 
but it hasn't dropped too much. It hasn't been going down more than I expected to. The heat's been kept up for the battery. So overall, really, really good for performance from that battery. And it's gonna get you through winter normally. I don't know what it's gonna do when it gets to minus 20, 30s, but so far I haven't driven it in really like plus weather at all. It's always been around minus 10 Celsius here in Quebec pretty much the entire week. So overall, the Sportage handles really well and it's really comfortable to sit in. I really like the damping in here. It's got really good high quality SUV ride quality, which is what you want, right? When you're going for an SUV. And I feel like they've packed in once again, just a whole plethora of features for, you know, a really, really decent price, a really reasonable price. Kia does the same thing that Hyundai does because they're kind of the same company and they put a lot of features in a car that's maybe a you know quite affordable to the majority of buyers which is something i personally love to see i mentioned a little bit about the plug-in hybrid electric system how it performs so you actually have like three different modes i can do automatic mode where it'll judge itself and figure out when it should be using battery when it should be using both when it should be using the engine to charge the battery then you have the hybrid mode where it's always going to use both and it's going to try to use both systems as much as possible to be efficient and then you have electric mode where when it can and when it feels like it's the right time to do it it will let you drive fully in electric mode now in the winter i do get a little bit less electric mode than i think i would driving this car in the summer but that being said it still is really good and when the engine decides to kick on it really doesn't bother me because you barely even notice like as you can see i don't know if you can see the center console there but it's telling me that i'm fully in electric mode right now so the the electric motor in this car is driving the car it's the gas engine is off so right now i'm saving maximum gas because i'm all on electric so that's really nice but it will kick on say if i up the heating or you know want to turn on the ac or i want to turn on my heated steering wheel then it might kick the gas engine on to power those systems but other than that if i just keep it steady here it should be fine also on the highway i found i could get up to like 110 with the electric mode on and it's still pretty good so usually i've been driving this car in eco mode it does have a sport mode i just popped it into sport mode and you can see the the gauge cluster kind of changed to red to, to signify sport mode but it also has a smart mode that will adjust to my driving whether or not i'm pushing on the pedal or not it'll decide whether it should engage sport mode or eco mode or whatever usually i've been driving the car in eco mode because i want to save money i want to see truly how efficient the kia sportage plug-in hybrid electric can actually be so I've been driving it in eco mode most of the time, but it does have a sport mode. There is a little bit of a delay and I'll try to show you here once I get down to this hill. There is a slight delay in the pickup where it kind of like doesn't really understand what I want to do and it just like it slows down quite a bit. So here I'll stop just a little bit here and we will, I'm not going to stop all the way because I'm on a public road, it's busy here. So I will just pump the brakes and three, two, one, punch this and there's the delay, it's coming, it's coming. There it is, full beams and 100. So, as you can see, as we have a snowmobiler, as you can see, it's not the most fastest thing in the world. There is a good amount of torque and the body kind of lurches upwards a bit. There's a good amount of torque though, and I feel like a lot of power was coming from the rear. Maybe that's where the, the rear motor is, but yeah, there's a good amount of torque. It's not instant like you're expecting from an EV, but this isn't a full EV, so you know I don't really mind that. I'm gonna switch back to eco mode because I don't need to be driving in all that mess. But yeah, I mean it's it's you're not gonna have a problem passing traffic. If you want to have a little bit of fun, you pop it into sport mode, and you know the steering becomes a little bit more stiff and the throttle becomes more responsive, brakes as well. So it is there if you need it. I don't ever see a point to it as you're trying to save money when you buy this type of car. But I guess if you want to have a little bit of fun or pass some slower traffic on the highway or on a road trip, whatever whatever well then you're gonna have absolutely no problem because it can still go it's still got you know just a just over 260 horsepower in this thing so it combined with the gasoline engine and the, and the electric motor so you know it's still good I doubt that the camera is picking this up but there's like little squiggly lines on the windshield and it's not anything for protection it's actually because I have a button 
here on the climate control with the same squiggly lines that actually is like coiled heaters inside. So the, the windshield is lined with the same stuff that you normally see on the rear windshield of your car. So it's lined here on the, the front windshield, which is really, really cool. The fact that I have an extra instant almost like it's it's really fast like don't get me wrong like you need to give it a bit of time for the car to warm up but as soon as the car is warm bang it's way faster than using your air to defrost the front windshield it's really really quick it goes on and then it'll automatically turn itself off once things are hot enough up here so but yeah it melted ice this week off like lightning fast and i was like why is this not in every car but now that i've pointed it out i don't know maybe you you're driving your Sportage, you didn't realize that, that was there, but it is. And like, once I saw it, I kind of couldn't unsee it for a while. And then you just, you just get used to it. It doesn't actually affect you that much. So braking in this car, of course it does have regenerative braking. And also when I let off the throttle, then I'm regaining gas. You can see in my center gauge there, it says charging. So, and then I'm braking now, it's still gonna say charging. So it is actively putting as much power as it can back into the battery like normal EVs do. So this plug-in hybrid electric system can do that as well, which is really nice because if you're ever going down a lot of hills or stopping and going a lot, you're actually putting power back in your battery. It might be a minute amount, but it still adds up, right? You're still adding to your overall efficiency. Talking about overall efficiency, so far I have driven this car 373.7 kilometers and my fuel economy is 5.2 liters per 100 kilometers. That's absolutely smashes, I'm pretty sure, the normal Kia Sportage that you could get. Absolutely destroys it. So uh, I'm pretty sure that if you drive a normal Kia Sportage, you're probably at like an eight or a 10, like minimum or maximum, whatever. But this is absolutely the way to go, I think, if you're in the market for a big SUV like this that has a nice, nice room in the back, nice room in the front, comfortable, really nice ride quality, really good all wheel drive system. And it's gonna save you money and that is important, right? I mean, sometimes in some places you can even get government incentives for plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. So the cost of this also would come down as well for you, which is really nice. So overall, the Kia Sportage has been super nice this week. I've enjoyed it a lot. It's it's simple, right? It's, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing that's gonna blow your mind. It's just gonna save you money while you're using your car and you just can't go wrong with that. It's got plenty of room in the rear, lots of space in the front, a little bit of piano black. Maybe we'd like physical buttons on the climate control side, but it's clean. I will give it that. It does look nicer than the Volkswagen we looked at last week in terms of climate control. Uh, but you know, I'll take it for what it is. And for the price that Hyundai Kia are asking for this, you know, below about $46,000, $47,000. And that's excluding, again, if you have government incentives in your area, it excludes that. So, you know, we could get this car for very cheap and you're gonna save a lot of money in the long run. And I love that about it. And it, overall, the, out, the, the exterior styling is really nice. I, I think it's the best looking Sportage that Kia has. I think they've done it again with, you know, redesigning a car and making it a car that people wanna buy just based off the exterior look, based off commercials. This car looks really good in commercials. I can't, however, speak to the reliability. I know a lot of people in the comments tell me that I won't buy a Hyundai Kia because reliability issues. Personally, I won't be able to tell you how good the reliability is because I only have these cars for a week, so <laughs> I don't know. You know, but obviously there might be an increased risk or something like that when it comes to having a plug-in hybrid system. You might need to take care of things just to, just that much more. But the good news is, is that they do have a warranty on the battery, on the engine, and overall on the car itself. So Kia has kind of tried to take care of things there because it is a newer technology, this plug-in hybrid thing that they're that they're doing. So that's good news if you do want to buy this car and you're worried about reliability it's not really going to be an issue if you can get the warranty now how they enforce that warranty i couldn't tell you and i won't be able to tell you but i'm sure in the comments you'll let me know if you have any horror stories but yeah i think that'll do it i think i'll leave it right there for the kia sportage overall really really great time with a car really not too many complaints besides like the lack of touch buttons but honestly that's it you know and if that's it in a car well then i think that's worth every penny right i mean cars are only going up this 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 year and forever i think they're just going to get more and more expensive as time goes so hopefully this has helped you make your decision hopefully i've given you some insight 
into the Kia Sportage. And let me know in the comments, do you like the Kia Sportage? Do you think there's any features that I should have mentioned? You know, let me know so we can have that discussion in the comments and then maybe other people will read them and it will help them out as well. That's my goal as always, is to help you make the decision on what kind of car you wanna buy. Or if you're just interested in new cars in general like I am and you wanna drive them and you know, maybe you don't have access to them like I've been lucky enough to do, well, let me do that for you and uh, you know, let me show you the ride and let, let's talk, let's have a conversation. So. With that being said, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. I think like only like 0.3% of my viewers are actually subscribed. So go ahead, if you're new here, if you've never seen a video of mine, click that subscribe button. Let me know you're here. Let me know what kind of car you drive. Let me know if, if you're interested in the Kia Sportage. And with that being said, we will see you in the next one. Take care.